seven year old girl looking at Orchard Street for the very first time. I had never seen something so beautiful. It was Christmas. I had never, ever heard Christmas carols before. Yes, my first trip to a foreign land, Singapore. I am 49 now, and I have these uh, three precious memories of Singapore. Number one, escalators. Oh my God. My brother and I have spent the entire holiday running up on a down escalator. Please don't try that. I think it's banned now. Those were our days. Your days are Fortnite and PUBG. Second is 50 shades of ice cream. I had ever only seen white, brown, and pink. And the third is my father giving me bubble gum. Yes, chewing gum was allowed in Singapore at that time. And then telling me, don't throw the wrapper on the street. I will get fined. What? No one had ever told me that I cannot litter on the streets. Wow, fines work. And third, why don't we do that in India? So, no, I did not become an activist. No, I did not create reforms. No, I did not change. But what I did think was that if I, for seven days, could take garbage, stuff it into my pockets, stuff it onto my knapsack, then there is no way I'm going to litter my country. The brunt was, of course, borne by my immediate family and then my cousins. I think during my summer holidays, my cousins would just run away from me, and one of them even nicknamed me when I went to Singapore. Coincidentally, he lives in Singapore now. So this moment of mine, that one thought, one fine, impacted me, my family, my extended family, and then my friends. In college, I had to use a different strategy because no way are they going to listen to my tantrums. So I started shaming them into stopping to throw garbage. What I did was, I told them once, if they didn't listen, I went and I picked up the garbage myself. And yes, change did happen. Now you see how it has grown from me, my family, to my friends. Cut to many years later. I am 23 now, I've just got married, and I've shifted into this large building with 56 families. And of course, here comes Holi, my most favorite festival. And why is it my favorite? Because it's in the month of March, and March is the time when you have final exams, and yay, I don't study on Holi. So it still remained my favorite festival. And it is a very, very tiring festival because you are eating the whole day, you're drinking the whole day, you're dancing the whole day, you're playing the whole day, and by five o'clock, you're ready to drop dead. But no, at five o'clock, I would get up and I would pick up all the garbage in the garden. I did not care about whose garbage was it, who littered, why am I the only person, and I continued picking up that garbage. And soon I saw that everyone started helping me, and now it's a culture. Every holy, even if people have gone home, had a shower, they come down and they help me pick up garbage. And one of my friends and my neighbors, Uttra, she said, hey, let's start segregating garbage. So we did all the right things. We bought this large drum. Uh, we spoke to the garbage collectors. We educated the house help. We put all the tick marks. We got infographic pictures. And you would think it works, right? Hell no. It did not work. So what do I do? I start going with the garbage collectors to collect garbage every single morning for a month. And I now know how many bottles of wine Mrs. Bhatia drowns. And Mr. and Mrs. Shah say that they are vegetarian. Oh my god, I know exactly what I saw in their bins. So yes, it did work to a certain extent. We had actually even got uh, gray dustbins and green dustbins and taught them properly how to segregate garbage. But when I saw that it wasn't having the impact, I started telling the house help, hey, can you please wake up the lady of the house? I need to speak to her. Yes, yes, I know it is 9.30, really early in the morning, but she needs to get out of bed. So she comes with all the nicest teas. Hello, how are you? Kiss, kiss, hug, hug. Uh, what's up with you? I said, hey, please, can you really help us? We need to segregate. Voila, it's done. I think it's done because A, the house help did not want the lady of the house waking up so early in the morning, and B, she did not, she did not want to be disturbed. So now, I know you are calling me garbage woman. But no, I am changing the current. Just the same way Sabi changed the current. A dear friend of mine, extremely artistic, said, let's go for a walk 
in the streets of Bandra to watch the street art or to see the street art. So 14 of us close friends, we are walking down the streets and we suddenly notice the number of trees that are dead. We said we need to bring awareness. So we started painting trees all around the area. Of course, dead trees all around the area to bring awareness. And people started noticing that how come these trees are dead right outside plots that need to be reconstructed and redeveloped. Soon, the BMC chopped off all our beautiful trees. No problem. Where can you stop any woman? No one has. So we started planting. And we started planting trees all over the places where we had painted trees. The slide that you see right now are two trees that were painted right outside Jamnabai. And here we have planted two trees. We have planted 400 trees in Juhu. And I personally have planted 34 trees on the fourth road. And one day, uh, during the monsoon day when I was planting a tree, I realized that my older daughter is going to leave me and go away to college. And I said, hey, why not let her plant a tree and grow her roots into the city? I convinced her and 50 of her friends to plant Franchipani trees in the Juhu Garden. And now today, if you walk into the Juhu Garden, you will see 50 gorgeous frangipani trees. So the point is to get noticed, and we did get noticed. We got a lot of media coverage. So what I'm trying to tell you is, whether you do it for a cause, whether you do it for your Snapchat story, or your streak, or your Insta story, or you do it for a picture in the paper, just do it. Change the current. Now, in 2008, I joined a gorgeous organization called CMCA, Children's Movement for Civic Awareness. This is an organization which teaches students active citizenship. We know the government is with us, but we need to make the government work for us. And here is the, real, here is the time when I realized that what an impact children can have on the governance of this country. And I also realized what an impact a teacher can have on the lives. So this is a time where we teachers can really make a difference. We are the ones changing the current for our future. So during this time, I was teaching in four schools. And I was trudging along to Billabong on a rainy day. And all those, anyone here who lives in Juhu? Yes. So you know exactly what happens when it rains in Juhu and how flooded it gets. I ruined three pairs of my shoes going to teach that class. And it was voluntary, right? So, and I was teaching them how to file an RTI. So I walk into class and I say, OK, guys, today is the day we're going to save my shoes. And of course, they all look at me like, OK, they're in the eighth grade. So they look at me and saying, crazy woman. But I say, no, we need to just save my shoes. We need to file an RTI. And we are asking the government to fill up those goddamn potholes there and raise the level. Lo and behold, my shoes were never wet again. This is an impact that now I have made locally. CMCA has actually made an impact nationally in Karnataka. Lots and lots of villages. There was this little girl called Lavanya. In her village, there were no toilets. As in, there were no attached toilets to her house. But of course, the field had superb human manure. So she's learned through CMCA that the government has funded the panchayats to construct attached toilets. She goes home very excited, tells her father. Her father says, please go to sleep. Do not waste my time. I am tired. Things like this don't happen. So what does little Lavanya do? She starts a non-violent protest. She stops eating. Her father must be saying, God knows why I sent my little girl child to a crazy school to learn crazy nonsense. But he eventually, and my mother must be freaking out and things like that, he eventually goes and a toilet is constructed. She dances, tells her friends, and my friends, 60 toilets were constructed in her village. News spread to other villages, and now Lavanya has become the brand ambassador of the Swachh Bharat Andolan. Do you see how me, my family, my community, my locality, and now my nation, one thought and idea spreading? So there is this documentary that we always made, all our students at CMCSC, my most favorite documentary. It is by our 
late President Dr. Abdul Kalam. It's a letter written in 2017. Please, I suggest you keep your bottle of water ready with you because this always makes me thirsty. So it's a letter written in 2070 and uh, it goes, when I was five years old, my father and I used to wash the car with a hose pipe. My children cannot believe we wasted water like that. I am 50 years old and I'm the oldest man alive on earth. Our kidneys don't function properly. Our life expectancy is 35 years old. Uh, sorry, our life expectancy is 35 and a 20-year-old looks like a 40-year-old. During our times, we were supposed to drink eight glasses of water. Today, we barely get half a glass. Women had long, beautiful hair. Today, we are all bald because we need to keep it clean. It is very probable that you will be killed on the streets if you're carrying a jerry can of water. There are water wars everywhere, and water is more coveted than gold and silver. My children listen to stories of my youth where I used to play in the fields, swim in the lakes, boat on the dams, and they ask me, Dad, where has the water gone? I get a lump in my throat, and I answer, I don't know where, but I know why. Why the water has gone is because I did not pay attention to the posters outside my classroom that said, save water. Please pick up your bottles, have a sip right now. I just need to tell you that as on Saturday, water has gone into the futures market in California. I also want to show you a couple of slides. And I know I am sharing this space with Medha Patkar and baby Greta but I just don't know how to say, what can I do? So this that you see here is an iceberg. It is called Alpha 68 Alpha. It has detached itself from the Antarctic and it's floating into the Atlantic Ocean. It is 4,800 kilometers long. It is going to get caught very soon on the low reefs of St. George's Islands. And then you know what's going to happen. Some ecological damage, food chains getting skewed, and of course you don't want me to give you a lecture about what happens if the food chains are skewed. In our school, we have started this club, an environmental club called Ecotopia. There's a moment in your bones when, when the fire takes over, blood is running, Battle gets closer. They can say what they want now. Cause we'll be screaming now. We can be here. It of course has many, many little subclubs to it, and we are going to change and help change the environment with it. But my favorite two are the movie club. Because in every class, you will look at them, and there will be 50% of the students who say, do I have to lift this pen? So yes, this club is for them. They can come watch movies. We will watch movies like Waterworld. We will sensitize these children so that they know this problem is real. So that tomorrow when they become politicians or, or, or big CEOs, they know climate change is real. And the second is the thrift shop. We want to change the narrative. Why is it, oh man, I'm wearing a Versace, so cool, and not, hey, this is Monica's and this is Rachel's. So let us make it a thrift world and let thrift be good. Why are we looking at governments and industrialists to change this environment? We know governments have to win elections. We know for winning elections, they need money. We know industrialists provide money. So change the narrative. It has to begin with a you. So this lady you see here, she is my mother-in-law. She is 80 years old. And of course, she found out from the best possible knowledge source, WhatsApp, that take this plastic bottle, cut up all your wafer packets, biscuit packets, and stuff it into it. She started doing it to recycle. My question is why? I am sure in her lifetime, the climate and the planet is not going to change. Is she doing it for her grandchildren? Is she doing it for a legacy? Oh, I'm leaving 
earth to my grandkids? Or is she doing it just like the seven-year-old me? Because she can. Why are we cutting a birthday cake on our birthday? Why are we not taking a pledge for the environment? Every birthday, I am not going to take the elevator two floors up. I am going to wear thrift clothes. I am going to take a bucket bath once a week. I will go vegetarian for a week, a day, a month, whatever. Why are we not taking pledges? If the average age of man is 75 years, and we start taking a pledge at the age of 60, it's 65 pledges into 365 days into 7 billion people. Let's change the narrative from what can I do to what can I do, and I do my best. Thank you, thank you very much, and thank you for being here today.